Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to discuss cards like Gilded Goose. Is Gilded Goose too powerful of a card? And specifically for this conversation, I want to talk about power levels in like relative terms. So I'm not talking about too powerful overall for Magic the Gathering, but specifically for the standard environment. Now, the Gilded Goose, for anybody who's been playing Magic for a long time, you're going to look at it and go, it's kind of like a Birds of Paradise. For those of you who don't know, Birds of Paradise was for the longest time your go-to one green mana fixer, aside, aside from things like Land War Elves, because Land War Elves did exist back in the day. But Birds of Paradise were your 0-1 flyer that you could tap for a mana of any color. Now, Gilded Goose is kind of like that. It is, it is in some ways more restricted than the Birds of Paradise, right? You can get a mana of any color out of it, but it does require that you have a food token to sacrifice to the Gilded Goose to get that mana. So there is the argument that, look, you can put it out, you only get to use it once before it needs to be refreshed with food to be ready to go, right? The, the whole... The whole card works like so. You pay one green, you put it out, you get a food token, you tap it the next turn, you sack the food token, and now all of a sudden Gilded Goose can't produce mana, but it does still have the ability to produce food tokens. I mean, you can pay a green with colors, tap it to make a food token, and when I first saw the card, I'm old school, right? So I'm used to cards like Birds of Paradise and other things, and I looked at it, and I went, it seems okay. It seems, oh, like, it seems all right. Your brain just goes, okay, you're, you've got to sacrifice a food each time. So it's really not that powerful, right? You just go, eh, wh whatever, who cares? I mean, look at Birds, if you were around for Birds of Paradise, you're just going to go, well, this is a much weaker Birds of Paradise, right? Overall, that that's how your brain categorizes it. And, uh, like, I, I actually, I remember being at uh, an FNM where somebody called the Gilded Goose... Like, I've got four birds in my deck. Oh, I'm like, those are not birds. Birds are birds of paradise. And you bolt those the first turn. Always bolt the birds. Like, just this old, all this old grouping of memories just kind of surfaced up. But anyways, that's just a funny side note. The The point is, is that early mana fixing, like, or, well, yeah, it's, it's mana fixing and acceleration combined together at a very quick speed admittedly it's a one-shot use but quick mana that you sacrifice like you have to sacrifice something you only get to do once can still be very potent look at cards like lotus petal now obviously i'm not saying that gilded goose is the same as a lotus petal but originally i was thinking about i, I mentioned in a previous video how insane it would be for lanoir elves to be in this particular format with the strength level of green the whole repeatable early mana. One turn, you boom. You've got your first turn Lanoir, you tap it, you're looking at like second turn Yorvo, things of that nature. Obviously, if you play a second turn mana fixer that taps for mana every turn, on your third turn, you're already at four mana. But I'm more comfortable with that two mana acceleration and it only providing green. The, 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 the difference, the magnitude of power that comes along with something like Gilded Goose is actually really noticeable. Where Gilded Goose will, I mean, right now, the most obvious example of what Gilded Goose is being used to accelerate out is Oko, right? Oko is a very dominant card. It's not as dominant as Field of the Dead was, but Oko is still a very dominant card. So as a result, you can see a second turn Oko, and you can either get the green mana or, or the blue mana, right? You've already spent a green mana to put out the Gilded Goose. So the Gilded Goose essentially is guaranteeing you that you're going to be able to play that second turn Oko, which is, oh, it's Broco. I mean, let's let's be real. A second turn Oko is absolutely crazy. And then the fact that Oko can turn around and make more food that the Gilded Goose can sack for mana is one thing. But Gilded Goose itself even has that secondary ability of creating food, which can keep you going in the long run as well. Now, obviously, if Gilded Goose didn't really have the ability to create food, it wouldn't feel as good a card. You'd go, well, it can't make mana as frequently. But I think even if you removed the ability for the Gilded Goose to make food and just had it come out, create a food, able to sack a food to make a mana, 
it still feels too strong in all honesty it's uh i went i love the fact that it's a zero two as well instead of just being a zero one it's like get out of here birds of paradise it it feels to me like a card that was made to kind of push the push the power level of green and made by somebody who's been around since the days of birds of paradise because if you compare it to a birds of paradise it genuinely doesn't feel as strong but in standard it's behaving in a way that's demonstrating its strength and i pondered for a while i wondered why if we had birds of paradise back in the day and birds didn't feel like too strong too strong too wrong why does gilded goose feel that way what is it that's causing this to happen and what it is is there's been a fundamental shift in magic the gathering over the years and it may not be as noticeable like when you've lived through it but if there was somebody who played magic like 20 years ago 25 years ago and then entered magic now they would see a stark difference the way magic used to work was spells outweighed creatures in terms of power level like spells were up here and creatures were down around here especially big fat honking creatures like green used to be the domain of the big well greens greens always been the creature color that's never changed throughout the history of magic right green is the creature color where you get the big pounders and smashers and craziness but back in the day that would be like a force in nature you would have to spend four mana every turn just to stop this 8-8 trampler from knocking you in the face for eight so to me the uh, the shift has been gradual but it's very obvious now when I reflect on creatures that exist. I mean, even if you take creatures that, that most people don't really consider standard worthy, that are like, not like, oh, this isn't that great. Look at aggressive mammoth. You don't see a lot of people playing aggressive mammoth. And it's six mana for an 8-8 trampler that gives all your creatures trample. When you compare that to the force of nature, it's a massive, massive step up. So the power level of creatures has stepped right upwards while the power level of spells has come down somewhat and have a harder time dealing with all of these creatures green has had a real boost in terms of its creatures it's got really like beefcake insano creatures now like yorvo is mind-blowing they never would have made yorvo back in the day like i look at yorvo and i go oh my god like three mana for a four four that every time you put a creature out grows by at least one one maybe more I remember after playing, I remember not having to, but I remember considering cards like Wood Elemental. Wood Elemental. Guys, this card is ridiculous. One green, three colorless, and then you have to sacrifice forests to actually give it power and toughness. You need to have five lands out. You need five lands out for this creature, and that's to sack one land because the forests have to be untapped, and you get a 1-1, one, one, right? Compare that to your vote like the power level the power level of creatures has gone right up and standard right now is is a crazy beast where if you don't have something right away and your opponent does you're done like a first turn gilded goose second turn oko means if you're not blazing out of the gates at that speed on your side of the board you're done because you're going to be on the back foot We've all been in those games where you're on the back foot. And what happens is your opponent just goes, I'm coming for your face right away. And so all you can do is keep grabbing your creatures and just throwing them in the meat grinder, just trying to stop your inevitable destruction. But because you have to do that, you have to keep throwing your creatures in the way. You don't get to sit there and develop your plan. Your plan was never to put out your creatures and just watch them get destroyed as you try desperately to survive. Your plan was to use your creatures to swing in hard. Or if you don't have creatures, I mean, take it however you want. You have to use your spells in a suboptimal way where you're just going, oh my God, like just, just trying to hold off the insanity that your opponent is bringing to the board. So having the Gilded Goose, it feels like it's just, it feels like, it feels like it's too much. I mean, Lanawar Elf felt like it would be too much to me. And the Gilded Goose feels like it takes Lanawar to the next step. Now your brain will at first tell you, okay, you have to sacrifice the food, so you're only getting to use this the one time to start with. But that doesn't matter, because it's enough. You don't, you, don't need, you don't need the Gilded Goose to be able to hit you mana every turn. Only getting to use it every once in a while, having a second Gilded Goose. These, these things, they, they make it okay. The Gilded Goose is still completely acceptable. And you can see that. If Gilded Goose wasn't strong, 
it wouldn't be used in the way that it is. I mean, it's it's a rare card for a reason. Look at Land Elf is a common card, and Gilded Goose is a rare card. And Gilded Goose isn't a rare card because it's going to warp a draft environment, right? Like, in all honesty, with a draft environment, you may have something awesome in your hand that Gilded Goose will help you speed up, but it's nothing compared to the, the consistency that having four Gilded Gooses lends to the speed of a deck. So that early buildup with the Gilded Goose is actually a genuine problem. And I do, I do think that if Oko becomes a dominant force in standard, like if Oko gets to the point that Field of the Dead did and requires a like a ban, and I'm not sure we'll get to that point. I did do a video discussing whether Oko needs to be banned or not and went more in depth with that. But overall, I don't know if Oko will necessitate a ban, but I do genuinely believe that if standard reaches the point where Oko like is really problematic and Wizards is going, okay, it's time to issue a ban. I don't think they're gonna target Oko because Oko's worth a lot more money. He's not he's not a prime target for banning, so they'll look for the cards around Oko. And one of the big candidates in my eyes around Oko that would get banned is Gilded Goose. Because by removing Gilded Goose, you slow the Oko deck down by a turn and also remove a food engine for it as well. So to me, the Gilded Goose is, it's, it's crazy to say that we've reached the point where a Birds of Paradise S card is too powerful for standard, but it genuinely does feel that way. Like the older formats of Magic the Gathering, especially um, the format with the Lotus and the, the Moxes and all that, it's the fastest format in existence. Games get decided like that. Well, standard kind of has a similar problem, obviously not to the same degree, but standard shouldn't have that problem at all. Games shouldn't be already decided and pretty much over by the third turn with the person on the back foot just not realizing that they're already done. You know what I mean? Like that, that kind of scenario shouldn't exist in standard for a healthy, fun environment. Games that go on a, li a little bit longer so people have an uh, ability to have a back and forth with your opponent, because you guys know what that's like. Have you ever been railroaded in a game where your opponent just grabs you and smacks you around, and then at the end you do nothing back, just going, oh, please, just trying to get your hands in front of your face, uh, and then at the end they go, good game, and you go, that wasn't a good game. Like, that, was, that wasn't even a game. You played Magic. I watched you play Magic. You played Magic all over my chest. Like, that, that's the sort of scenario we're talking about. That's never a feel-good thing. That's the kind of thing Standard needs to, needs to move away from. So Gilded Goose and cards like that, they, they need to be careful when they put them into, into an environment. And it feels like Green was pushed. Green was pushed for Throne of Eldraine. And I mean, I can see why they would push Green. Remember, I started way back in the day when Green was garbage. It was a garbage color. It had some cool cards like some nice acceleration, Birds of Paradise, Fast Bond, but overall, almost all green cards sucked, and green was an easy color to handle. Like maybe, maybe you splash green, but you don't go mono green unless you want to lose. But those days are gone. Mono green can be a dominant force now. Wizards has pushed the envelope with green, and I'm cool with that because green's my favorite color. I love seeing big, crazy green cards like Yorvo, Questing Beast, but I also recognize that cards like Gilded Goose, first of all, are they're too much, and secondly, they're not just limited to green. You can easily splash this into whatever, or you can just splash other colors into green. A Gilded Goose and a couple of uh, a couple of green blue shocklands, and there's no reason that you can't throw Hydroid Crasis into your mono green deck, right? So, it, to me, the Gilded Goose is not the way to create. It's 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 not a good not a good idea for standard. But that's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Is there anything that I missed with this? And also, what do you think of Wood Elemental? Well, I played with this card. Look at how bad this is. This is how badly, this is how badly I wanted Mono Green to work for me. This is how bad things were back in the day of Legends. Okay, I'm gonna show you another card that I absolutely love from back in the day too, while we're at it, to show you how awful Green was. Pixie Queen, I love this card. I love this card. But look at the casting cost. Look at the activated ability cost just to give flying, and this is a 1-1 one, one creature. And that's rare! Both the cards, the Wood Elemental and the Pixie Queens, were rares! That's crazy times! That's crazy times! Anyhow, like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Big shout out to my patrons and channel members. Thanks for supporting the work that I do. 
and I will see you all tomorrow.